Prora has been lying in ruins since the very end of World War II. When I came here two decades ago, the entire stretch of Prora was in ruins. Every single building was dilapidated and certainly wasn't in use. By 2017, now, large portions of Prora have been sold to private and commercial interests and are being entirely redeveloped, which I guess is a good thing, although I'm sure it's somewhat controversial. I don't live in Germany uh, and I've already asked myself why are they still using the name Prora, which is a national socialist name uh, through the Kraft durch Freude program. And the second question is how do the Germans feel about using a facility such as this built by Hitler? Well, after walking for several kilometers and seeing the entire area entirely redeveloped, uh, we've now found the last remaining stretch of Prora on the island of Rügen. As you can see behind me, the entire top floor of this building has collapsed. It looks as though um, by design because the base pillars have all been blown off. So I'm glad we can still see some of the old Prora as it was designed, as it was meant. Obviously in very poor shape and I have to watch where I'm walking because there's gaping holes everywhere. We'll come back in the morning and uh, see what it looks like in daylight. A little bit further south from this location are massive complexes of beach condos and very large five-star hotels. This very much is a prestige beachside location in Germany in the present day. And things were not any different in the 1930s during the National Socialist era. The difference is that following the Great Depression, people in Germany, particularly the workers, didn't have the money or the time to go on holiday. And the Strength Through Joy program by the Nazis gave them the opportunity to do exactly that. Come to these places, the places usually reserved for the rich to unwind and relax. So to bolster the welfare of the working classes, Hitler promised change. Whilst modern historians focus on Hitler's rearmament program, Hitler spent an inordinate amount of time, effort and resources on civil infrastructure projects. He wanted to make a statement. After decades of revolutions plaguing Germany and great political, economic and social unrest, he built Prora, the world's biggest hotel. Typical of Nazi architectural statements of the time, it was colossal. And even today, the structure is visible from space. It had a total span of 4.5 kilometers running parallel to the beach. We can just see the faint outline of one of the coastal walkways that the locals use when they're going for a bit of a walk with their dogs in most cases. And just behind me to the left here, you can see a rather interesting set of trees or a tree line. It's very hard to pick out, but from here I can see just a couple of centimeters of a roof line. And that's where we're gonna go. And here it is, the last remaining stretch in the ruins of Prora, the world's largest hotel. Now just for the record, I'm walking straight from the beach to Prora. Nothing is stopping me, there's no signs, nothing. The scale of Prora is dumbfounding. It's a colossal beast. It's a statement. A little bit like the principles of Regelbau with the 
bunker systems that were built both in the West Wall or the Siegfried Line as well as the Atlantic Wall. Prora at Rügen seems to be built in a set of modules. And it doesn't matter how far I go, the same rhythm of building seems to have been sustained. Long corridors, every 15 meters or so this emergency exit and stairway and I am also situated underneath some sort of uh, evacuation bunker or similar. These are the ruins of Nordflügel 4 or Northern Wing Block 4 which after demolition attempts is in the worst shape. It really is an extraordinary concept to think that only some 80 years ago families were making their way across this corridor looking for their various rooms. They'd open the door, come into these uh, very large rooms with big windows overlooking the sea. It would have been quite an impact, particularly for the working classes who never could afford such fantastic holidays. Prora was designed to house 20,000 people. That truly is colossal. And when we look at these ruins from an architectural point of view, we also get an insight into the culture and its people. On level three of this building, I found that this building has been designed with communal bathrooms. Now, what does that tell us about National Socialist Germany of the 1930s? There is very little time left now. The building contractors are quite literally moving in to demolish and renovate the last remaining original parts of Prora. I am keen to investigate what lies below these Nordflügel blocks as they look like service and utility cellars to me and I want to verify my suspicion. Problem is I need to squeeze into a dark place no one has been in for 80 years. Well I've crawled through the ancient crypts of Rosalind Chapel in Scotland from about the 17th century. A week ago, I was crawling through bunkers of the West Wall. And today, we're at Prora. This is the only uh, way I've found into the uh, emergency evacuation of bunkers down here. So let's have a look. I've got my uh, carbon monoxide monitors with me, my carbon dioxide monitors, my oxygen meters, my masks. Don't do this at home leave it to the professionals. Not far into the mystery tunnel, there's some sort of toxic measurement on my portable photo ionization detector and I've got to leave. Quick. What's that? I think it's the toluene. Yeah. A little further south, Nordflügel 3 and 2 are in excellent original condition. And this will be the last recorded film footage of the original Prora before the builders redeveloped these remaining sections to modern apartment blocks. Prora was designed as the world's largest family resort. It consisted of eight main buildings, each 500 meters wide and consisting of another 10 side wings which were used as communal wash, laundry, toilet and administrative areas. In between each of these main blocks were communal areas or Gemeinschaftshäuser, which at a length of 110 meters reached all the way onto the beach and sea, offering various resort style amenities, including sun decks, billiard rooms, bowling alleys and restaurants. Both north and south sectors had their own large indoor wave pool. The central area of Prora was earmarked for a Festplatz 
and Festhalle, which included a massive theatre. The Festhalle was designed to allow the simultaneous service of all 20,000 guests. To service this massive undertaking, Hitler ordered the lands to the south of the hotel to be developed to include a specialist piggery, vegetable greenhouses and supply facilities. I found another very interesting feature of life in the old Prora building. Here at the end of the hallway is a remnant of a colourful sketch or painting of the island of Rügen. Or Rügen. It seems to have been hand painted and this area of the corridor seems to be this cream yellow musty colour. was intended. It's one of the smaller side rooms, but nonetheless, it looks quite modern. There's space there for oil heaters, very large windows that you can open to get the uh, sea breeze into the room. It's fantastic. Well, this is the male bathroom, and it seems that Male bathrooms and female bathrooms were staggered every 50 metres. I know it's a male bathroom because I can see the faint outline of urinals on this wall. I have inspected over 600 rooms of the remaining block of Poro. This is the only room that has wallpaper. This is quite a find because I really didn't think Poro had wallpaper. After the aromatic hydrocarbon warning in Nordflügel 4, I venture into the belly of Nordflügel 3, and my perseverance pays off. The combined service and later air raid shelter tunnel appears once more. Well, we can finally see what the emergency exits and bunker systems underneath Prora look like, because I've found one that's intact. They say one man's trash is another man's treasure. And here, at the bottom of Prora, we find a relic of the past, an original Prora bed. And there are very few images or photos of the original inside of the Prora resort. I've only got one, but it confirms that the rounded bed edges make this an original relic. And so another day passes, and as night falls, I decide to take another look at the external features of Prora to see what I can find. I was keen to investigate some of the outbuildings around Prora, especially for signs of post-war communism. Well, this is a great find. On the side of the building, we found an old school, East German, Soviet style mosaic. And typical of the time, it depicts the various aspects of communist life. We know it's communist because in the top left hand corner, there's a communist socialist red flag or banner with a very typical Soviet helmet on that particular soldier holding flowers. On the left here we have tradesmen working. The mother personified as the giver of life with um, a tree with fruit, the owl representing wisdom, chemistry, railways, right down to the environment and even such a simple thing as a washing machine which shows progress, a state of progress. I'm quite sure that within the next five to 10 years, this building more than likely will simply be demolished and such an amazing relic of history is then gone forever. And that would be a great shame.